Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Thursday, August 31st, the last day of August. Goodness, we got September rolling around, some cooler months, hopefully, coming up here. As we head into winter, latest activity, it looks like a 4.6 earthquake in the red flag, somewhat deep at about 245 kilometers deep there into the uh, portion of the Java Trench, Indonesia area. That earthquake also showing up here. Band of Sea, that's exact location where it's at. Getting some deeper movement quake activity there. Overnight, uh, haven't really seen any major uptick here. Um, still kind of waiting on some advancement here across the Java Trench northward. Also uh, expecting some movement here across New Zealand. Really haven't seen any of that yet. Just been kind of at a standstill, so to speak, for uh, uh, the plate dynamics out here. Let's go ahead and check out the West Coast, California. A little swarming activity down here on the Imperial Fault south of the border into the Baja California region. Mostly smaller microquakes, uh, quite a few twos kicking off there. Uh, there is a little bit of uptick also here across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, the San Andreas Fault, the plate boundary right here from the Salton Sea northward, is quiet for now. We'll continue to watch that though. Of course, it's uh, you know it's been building up strain for quite a while. 1.9 earthquake up here north of Malibu beautiful drive out there but also very dangerous literally driving on a fault system out here uh, when you take that uh, road i think that's highway is it one yep either way beautiful area a little small earthquake there now uh some movement up here along the san andreas fault that's going to be the um, creeping segment creeping section mostly smaller microquakes and uh, still seeing a little bit of activity up here Although this is from yesterday, really not a whole lot of newer movement overnight into the Northern California area. I did see some movement up here in the Mount St. Helens area earlier. I was watching the live seismograph stations uh, showing a couple spikes there on the Mount St. Helens. That was earlier. Looks like they're only reporting a handful, but uh, uh, let's check that out here real quick and see what we got. I was checking out this earlier. There's quite a few uh, spikes but I want to go over here and uh, just get the latest information here on Mount St. Helens where there's uh, been a, like I say, a pretty good amount of small earthquake activity. There's a couple of those listed there on the map in the red. Um, <clears throat> last two days in the orange, I think the largest we've seen was maybe a, a 2.4. Uh, let's go over here and check out the seismograph station here. Let's see if we got the latest updated image here from the PNSN network that's the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network here and um, a little bit of earthquake activity still these are very small earthquakes um, including these right here but they're earthquakes nonetheless and there's quite a few of them you guys see all those out here these little bitty red and blue ones uh, very small ones and that's even uh, into yesterday as well, at least the UTC time of yesterday. A couple more earthquakes showing up there on the map. And uh, we can go back probably the previous day before that and see uh, a couple more earthquakes. So definitely, I uh, believe that was at 2.7 uh, a couple days back. But either way, uh, just kind of watching it. Really not seeing any, uh, you know, signs of volcanic activity right now this is just earthquake activity at the uh, summit region so it could have something to do with maybe subsidence i don't know there is a uh, little patterns you know little seasonal patterns that it goes through far as the um displacement vertical uplift and deflation and whatnot uh, in this area but uh, it's hard to say Either way, just kind of keep an eye on it. That's why I do have a seismograph station up there monitoring the activity. There's an earthquake there at Hot Caves, Hawaii. That one pretty much flatlined this uh, seismograph station here. Up almost to 700 microns a second. Um, see what we got over there in Hawaii. It looks like things may be picking up. No. No, uh, well, it hasn't been reported yet. It just came in. But it looks like a little bit of activity stirring up there across the Kilauea Volcano area. Obviously, when you see this type of setup across the flank of a volcano, that's a sign of some magma movement. 
that's for sure. Uh, let's double check the latest information here from the hazard notification system. With regards to Kilauea Volcano, this was put out today by the USGS. The volcano is currently not erupting, but obviously there's still signs of elevated unrest. No unusual activity has been noted across the rift zones for now. And most of these earthquakes have been uh, occurring roughly around one to two miles below the surface with no upward migration detected. So we just got uh, a little bit of magma moving around down there. Going to continue to watch that though and see how it plays out. But for now, uh, definitely some earthquake activity uh, stirring up out there on the big island. All right, let's get back here to the States. Still seeing some aftershock activity up here. Uh, outside of the Salt Lake City area, north region. It looks like around the uh, Wolf Creek, Huntsville area. Yesterday, they did, they did have a 3.7, so there's a little bit of aftershock activity occurring there. And up around Yellowstone, got some small quake activity. Doesn't look like too much showing up on there, so let's just double, double glance, double check here. There's one earthquake I can see. Maybe a couple down here. In the last few hours nothing big though as we can see things are pretty much calm and this is all going to be weather related we'll probably see that stir up again today depending on uh, the storm potential out here in the uh, wyoming area rest of the country well about the same as yesterday some movement out in oklahoma 2.4 and some activity out in the oil fields there of texas not a whole lot going on through the eastern portion of the country and a look at the South America region and the Puerto Rico Trench. Well, roughly about the same as yesterday again. Just a handful of earthquakes, nothing big to report. 4.6 Ecuador area, that's about the only uh, moderate sized earthquake overnight here in this region. 186 kilometers deep. We got one earthquake out here in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge from uh, yesterday. And uh, even South Africa had a little bit of activity outside of Johannesburg region, a 3.5 that the USGS is reporting. That's a little rare for them to report this small of an earthquake out there. Either way, um, there's that earthquake coming in, 3.2 there to the big island. That's going to be that earthquake that just showed up on that seismograph. Looks like it just got upgraded, 3.3. And, you know, there's a good reason. It definitely flatlined this seismograph station here. Most of the time, um, you know, we get little earthquakes like this around Yellowstone. Really doesn't flatline it completely. But this one here, 3.1. Well, that's kind of odd. It was shown at 3.3, 3.2, now 3.1. It's all over the place. Either way, that's the uh, earthquake showing up here on the seismograph station. So we'll continue to watch that. You know, it could just kick off all of a sudden far as the eruptive status goes and probably we'd probably see another good swarm uh, of earthquake activity out here prior to the eruption but this is pretty deep here 32 kilom or 28 kilometers deep excuse me uh, definitely still got stuff brewing underneath this area all right uh, let's see here a little activity clustered over here across the eastern portions of Afghanistan and uh, over here around western China this is activity stirring up due to the plate dynamics across northern India and the um, stress associated across the subduction zone here. A couple different areas seeing uh, some strain out here. The latest of 4.8. Tajikistan, Tajikistan, 45 kilometers deep. So continue to watch that area. A couple different quiet zones out here to watch. Again, New Zealand's one of them. Still waiting on some further advancement between this area here. And we had a couple earthquakes down here in the Java Trench, but this area is pretty much wide open for some movement. It's been lacking lately. Uh, let's see. Let's check out GeoNet. See what we have here for the uh, folks down in the southern hemisphere. 3.8. Uh, 3.8 showing up there about four hours ago. 3.2 North Island yesterday. So a little bit of shaking being reported out here in the last few hours, it looks like. About 10 people reported some shaking outside of Wellington region. Uh, I'm pretty certain that would probably show up here on the seismographs. 3.8. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at? 
There it is. 3.8, this one right here. Looks like a handful of smaller quakes as well from uh, last 24 hours prior to that 3.8. That's going to be this uh, signature right here about four to five hours ago. Uh, and aside from that, uh, anything else popping up there in South Island? It doesn't look like it. Pretty calm, but uh, still, we'll keep an eye on this area. It's been awfully quiet. All right, uh, space weather activity. Let's double check that. See if we got anything major to chat about in our flare department. 60% chance for a sea flare. Goodness. Welcome to solar minimum. Well, solar maximum, but it's it's not opposite year. Should be uh, we should be kicking up here real soon again once with these uh, sunspots. Let's look at the uh, magnetic structure. Of course, these are wanting to. Uh, looks like they're getting a little bit more complex over here. They are shifting off towards the western limb of the sun and will be out of sight, out of mind here in the coming hours and days. We're left with a couple blobs of sunspots out here. This one just completely vanished, even since last night. And um, I don't really have too much hope for this one either. So we're, goodness, entering back into that super quiet zone. Uh, there's really not a whole lot coming around the bend either. I don't see any major bright features. And that's what it is. There's just not a whole lot of uptick currently taking place in the solar weather department. Not a whole lot of aurora potential either in the next three days or so. Pretty calm across the board there. All right, weather outlook here for today. Not a whole lot of severe weather, just uh, marginal risk for some severe weather out here across Arizona. And uh, that's probably just due to maybe some winds with those thunderstorms that will pop up today. Again, nothing major though. Thunderstorm outlook, there you go. 40% chance here across portions of Arizona and New Mexico. California gonna be getting in on some activity here soon far as rainfall goes I'm looking forward to it um, show you guys what's going on here we got a kind of a low pressure system going to be developing over the west coast area bringing in some rain and there's actually some decent chances in there uh, over the fires there's been quite a few fires up here in northern California and Oregon as well hopefully this will help get the situation under control because you know what's burning is uh what's left of california there's not a whole lot left to burn out here i used to love going up into the mountains here green pine trees everywhere now it's just i don't even venture up there it's all dead you know it's like sticks just sticking up out of the ground burnt and uh you know a lot of them have been cut down but uh hopefully they re uh reforest this area Either way, rainfall. Looks like we got uh, some decent rainfall maybe coming in Northern California with that low pressure system. And I think coming down the road here too, well, looks like that's changed already. <laughs> Remember last night there was a setup out here with some rain. Well, it's jumped off the model. So you really can't be 100% accurate or at least take these, uh, you know, these models. Got to take them with a, a grain of salt there because they can change in a blink of an eye. So that's a GFS model. Let me go over here to the Windy, Windy, Windy Map. One of the best apps I love and utilize quite a bit. Uh, we're gonna check out the rain fall accumulation here over the next. This says the next three days, so that would include obviously um, tomorrow when it's supposed to rain. This is being a little bit less aggressive out here. Most of the rain looks like maybe down around South Lake Tahoe in the Sierra Nevada mountain area. That's the ECMWF, the HRR model, next 48 hours. Yeah, that's roughly about the same as well. The GFS one, at least on the, uh, the other previous model I showed you guys, showed a little bit more rainfall. So we'll see how it plays out. You know, you can't really take these things 100% seriously. Just gives you a good indicator where maybe some of the the most potential rainfall could accumulate but uh, again we'll see how that plays out there's a uh, well let's this glance into uh dahlia here real quick see if uh it's even active tropical storm it still looks like um it is venturing off into the atlantic it is expected to get caught up 
and drift further off north come early next week 65 mile per hour sustained winds out there with tropical storm Dahlia moving east at 20 miles per hour so it looks like there's still some tropical storm warnings up here across portions of North Carolina let's see where let's see where that path takes us here there it is right now I'm gonna put this into view and see what we got notice it's starting to spin off out there eastern side of the screen or right side of the screen and it just kind of hangs out out there in the Atlantic for a little bit before getting caught up. There's a tropical system down here off the coast of Baja, California. That's probably going to head straight to the northwest and dissipate over cooler waters just like that. And I'm really not seeing anything major entering into the Gulf currently. I don't think we have any major threats even way down the road. So just uh, we'll continue to watch maybe for some new new development uh, but i think for right now things are um pretty calm here is what's out in the atlantic right now got franklin still spinning out there that's been holding steady for a little while uh currently 100 mile per hour sustained winds that is expected to uh track towards the northeast there eventually losing momentum over time but uh all right well See how this goes all right folks um i got a bunch of schoolwork i gotta do I, I need to get busy on it like right up right away stay safe southern california down here showing a little bit of seismic activity notice this uh this graph here showing some spikes some very small earthquake activity but uh that's somewhat of a sign there of pressure building out in the southern california area a lot of times i'll notice that and then we'll see increasing earthquake activity following this type of uh that type of view uh, anyway we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight uh, people asking about the hundred thousand subscriber giveaway we're gonna be putting out that video soon um, I don't know exactly when but uh, it'll be out still getting all the stuff get together all the uh, kinks worked out exactly what we're gonna be giving away and whatnot so either way we're still giving out prizes to ten people through a random drawing and the uh, entry video will be coming out here. Um, like I say, I don't know exactly when, but it will be soon. And um, and then we'll go from there. And then we'll talk about the prizes that were given away. And i um, pretty excited. And all this is because of uh, you guys making it possible to hit the uh, 100,000 subscriber mark. It's a pretty good milestone, I would say, as uh, far as subscribers go. I've been doing this for a little while quite a while but i remember when i just had a couple thousand subscribers and now we're over a hundred thousand subscribers so you know it's just onward from here i appreciate it and um you know continue to provide daily updates and uh, hopefully hopefully get uh some more on location trips going my next on location trip will be to cover the annular eclipse coming up here in october uh so i'll be live streaming that there with the solar filter and uh We'll see how it does. Should be pretty fun. I always love a good eclipse. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Have a good one, folks.